Hi, I'm Anthony Birch, and I'm the lead writer of Borderlands 2, and I'm going to talk you through the Wildlife Exploitation Preserve, which we are playing through. Uh, Joe is playing Axton, who is cheekily named Lilith. He just jumped. And Adam is playing as Zero, who has a bunch of gibberish as his name. We're going to take a look at everybody's skills now. Um, Adam, you can see, has already put a little uh, few points into the Bloodshed Tree, which is all about doing a lot of melee damage to Zero. Uh, if you could highlight uh, Execute, because that's really cool. Uh, execute is a is a what we call a game changer skill for Zero. It allows him to dash forward when he's in deception mode and does a melee attack. You'll see Adam use that later on, and it is off the chain, as it were. Um, if you check out uh, the Axe and Skill tree, he's currently on the Gunpowder tree. This basically improves, or the Gorilla tree, or Gunpowder. Um, this improves a lot of really cool things. We have uh, Impact, which just increases your general gun damage. you got something like Metal Storm that increases fire rate after you get a kill. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff. Uh, Gunpowder is really great because once you get to the bottom of that, you get a nuke. Uh, this is the Gorilla tree. It improves your turret, uh, adds rockets to it, adds the, the increases the amount of time that your turret is out. Um, at the very bottom, you can actually get a slag gun on your turret, which basically, when, enemies coded, when an enemy is coated in slag, more incoming damage is done to them. So it's a very fun tree. So yeah, the basic story of uh, at this point in the game is Mordecai, uh, the hunter from the first game, the Vault Hunter character, has had his pet bird Bloodwing kidnapped by the Hyperion Corporation, the Handsome Jack, and he needs your help to get it out, essentially. And now we're seeing some stalkers who are just real bastards. Uh, they can cloak, essentially, as long as their shield is up. So as you can see, um, Adam is using an electric SMG on them, which is really, really good because electric just ravages shields and they're having less opportunity to cloak. You can see all the rockets on Axon's turret, which is pretty badass. Um, Adam is also using a TDR, you'll notice. Every time he reloads, he throws it like a grenade, and the amount of damage that grenade does is dependent on how much ammo is left in the clip. And what's really interesting about that is that you basically have to make a choice between I can reload with a bunch of ammo in the clip and do a crap ton of damage if I hit, but if I miss, I'm just going to lose all that ammo, and that's a real bad thing. Um, just heard a little bit from Mordecai there. This is uh, one of the many green environments you will see in Borderlands 2. It's not just dust and sand. We have, you know pretty lush environments like what you'll see here, especially once we get up to the crow's nest where Mordecai's hanging out. Yeah, the environments are much more varied and much improved from the first game. And uh, you can see that Adam has a pretty badass Jacob's pistol in his hand right now with a blade on there that increases his melee damage. And here we got Mordecai. As you can tell, he uh, looks a little bit different from the first game. It's been five years since the first game, so he's been through a little bit. Mordecai and Bloodwing have been through a little bit. Really all of our Vault Hunters. but. Uh, He's basically come up here and is, is uh, as a sniper would be, he's sort of scouting the area. You can see that he's got a tally mark of all the loaders he's killed. He's sort of trying to see what the map is, and he's going to be your support for this mission because in several missions of Borderlands 2, you're going to actually fight alongside and get help from the original four Vault Hunters. Even though we've got a new cast of characters, the original four are back in full force and are going to basically be uh, your guides. I'll just let him talk because this dialogue is so good that I wrote. Like at least a two-man uh, job. You can get inside to the shipyard, you can get your support. I love that he points at the, the, his little diagram. says, damage the bots? Question <laughs> mark? Which is totally what you are going to do, as you'll see. So yes, Mordecai is somewhere within the bowels of the Wildlife Exploitation Preserve, which Handsome Jack made to, uh, basically to experiment on the creatures on Pandora with Iridium, which is an alien element that was in a little bit of the first game, you found Iridian weapons. Um, that's whatever alien force was on Pandora before the humans showed up, essentially. And Iridium appeared on Pandora a lot more after the opening of the vault at the end of the first game. And Handsome Jack and Hyperion have basically got their hands on a lot of it, and now they're just trying it on everything. Because you can use Iridium to make E-Tech weapons, which are just these crazy, awesome alien weapons. Oh, you saw that uh, Adam used his execute attack there, but he missed, but I'm sure that won't be the only time he tries it. Um, and uh, yeah, basically they're using Iridium to experiment on all these creatures, and this is just a big torture sort of facility for all these creatures, and we gotta make sure we get Bloodwing out of there, as it were. Uh, really badass Jacob Snipe Rifle. Um, you gotta cock it every, after every shot, but the exchange is super high damage that you see Adam's got. Um, Joe has a Vladoff Snipe Rifle, which is very different because its individual bullets do less damage, but it has an incredibly high fire rate. It's basically just like a high damage assault rifle, almost. It's a very, very, very cool gun. Um, and you can see they just look different. All the guns in Borderlands look way, way different from one another. The Jacob sniper rifle was all, you know, gold filigree and all this nice stuff. And the Jacobs looks very Russian and very rustic. And you're shooting a corpse, Joe. It's all good. Um, it looks almost like an AK-47 kind of thing. It's very cool. And uh, a bunch of stalker piles head up everywhere. You can see that the, the creatures have sort of staked their territory out here. If you like popping things that look like blisters to get ammo, you are going to love Borderlands 2. 
So one of the cool things about Borderlands 2 is that we can change objectives mid-mission, which doesn't sound like a big deal, but if you played the first game, uh, every mission that you got, they would say, go do, go collect five cans of skag food. And you would do that, and that was just the whole mission. Now our mission system has the ability to change objectives on the fly, to have branching objectives, to have multiple turn-ins, to do all this kind of crazy stuff. So every mission is actually now a little bit of adventure, because, oh, it's going to be super easy to get inside the wildlife exploitation preserve, isn't it? Oh, whoops. No, unauthorized access detected. And now we're going to have to do some clever stuff to get inside, and that's going to involve some really uh, non-standard gameplay, basically. Now you're seeing the Hyperion Loaders, who are uh, one of our new enemy types in the game. Very, very cool, because you can basically blow their limbs off, and they have a bunch of crit spots, so you might think, oh, they're really easy to take off, I just got to shoot them in the armpits or in the crotch or any of that stuff, but they actually have all kinds of different things they can do. If you blast their legs off, they'll just crawl at you Terminator style, which is terrifying in its own kind of way. Uh, oh yeah, okay, what we saw there was um, Adam just backstabbed a robot with Execute. He sort of dashed forward, which is what Execute allows him to do, and he did a melee attack from behind, which did additional damage with backstab, which is, you can play Zero like a sort of a rogue stealth character if you're into that, and it's a very, very fun way to do. Uh, you can also, if you're not into melee, you can go into the uh, Cunning Tree, and he has a skill called Ambush, which allows you to do basically backstab damage, with, but with guns, which led to a build that we call a shotgun ninja around the office where you just get right behind him with a, a Jacob's shotgun and just blast him in two. Um, you can see that Axon has a very cool doll assault rifle. And what's neat about doll is that they have pretty high damage um, and pretty decent fire rate if you're not in iron sights. But once you go into iron sight, they go into burst fire mode and you have really great stability there and it just wrecks everything. So what you saw there while I was talking like a jackass was the objective was actually you had to cripple a bunch of bots so that Hyperion would release repair loaders and open the door. And what's cool about that is, oh, okay, you cripple them all, and then all the Hyperion repair bots come out and just give them all their limbs back, and suddenly you're in a much more difficult uh, combat. Or you would be if these guys weren't actually so good at the game and had such amazing loot. But imagine that that was really difficult. Um, okay, uh, Joe just threw a Singularity Grenade. Those are really cool because they pull everybody into their radius and then they explode. It's really great if you want to do um, some torg blasting like what uh, Adam is doing right now. So basically uh, Joe is pulling them all into one area with singularity and then Adam has switched to a torque shock in which every shot explodes and has a small radius damage. So everybody's in one area and they all just get blasted by the torg pellets and it's great. You can also see a fire um, spewing grenade that uh, I believe Adam just threw down. Very, very good for holding down a particular area. Slag, uh, okay, so you might see enemies suddenly turn purple. That's because Mordecai is slagging them with his sniper rifle. Like I said earlier, slag is a new element in Borderlands 2 that's really good for co-op and also pretty good for single player when you've got the Vault Hunters on your side because it means any damage done to somebody who's slagged that is non-slag damage is going to just absolutely wreck them. Uh, and <laughs> Adam just bitch slapped that guy so hard he went back into the spawn and died. That was pretty awesome. Um, you'll see just from the, just the chaos on the battlefield right now, the combat in Borderlands 2 is so much more intense. You can't actually go on autopilot. You know, you have to constantly be understanding your, your strategies and stuff like that. There are repair bots around, healing everything. Uh, Axon's turret is trying to knock it out of the sky. It looks really awesome. Um, so do you prioritize the repair bots before they can heal the surveyor or the, the loaders you've just blasted the limbs off of? Or do you go for the loaders first? Or do you go for the humans who you can't blast off their limbs, but they can do a lot of damage and they can jump across the entire map and start causing little mini earthquakes around you and stuff like that? Uh, let's watch Adam go into deception here. And then boom, execute attack, one hit kill. Very cool. The exploders, you'll see the EXP loaders get close to you and detonate themselves and do a crap ton of damage. You gotta make sure to take them off before the power loader that um, both uh, Joe and uh, Adam are currently trying to deal with can ri basically ricochet your bullets back at you unless you can flank them or shoot at their feet or uh, do something to stun them like hitting them with explosive shots or a grenade. Um, they are real bitches, as it were. I almost um, gave them dialogue that was basically just them saying, get away from her, you bitch, but we thought that was a little bit too obvious of a reference, so. We just kept it subtle. Well, as subtle as Borderlands gets. Um, you may hear some uh, some dialogue here from the voice of Hyperion. All of our uh, maps have uh, basically just ambient dialogue that sort of plays in them to add flavor and hopefully make you laugh. But if you hate it, I apologize. Um, <laughs> I'm really selling you on this. Um, okay, we're about to enter a really cool area. We're gonna fight some Skags and we'll be able to show you how Skags have uh, changed in Borderlands 2. So, anybody played Borderlands 1, there were a lot of Skags. They were very fun to fight. They're even cooler this time because uh, if you can let this elemental Skag, or you might actually just have to kill him, but if any pup Skags around, the badass fire Skag, no, we obliterated him, it's all good. 
just trust what I'm about to say, though, that it's true. Uh, the elemental fire skags can get a bunch of skag pups around them, do this AoE attack, and then turn all of them into fire pups. So suddenly you're dealing with a whole lot more dangerous enemies than what you had before. Um, the AI is just much improved in every way. The, the creatures can do crazy things with one another. You saw that with the robots, and maybe when we come up, you'll see some more of that with the skags. Um, so you'll notice uh, the Torg shotguns are awesome in that they do a buttload of damage and they have a damage uh, radius on them, but their bullets, you'll notice, fire a little bit slower. They're gyro jets rather than actual bullets because they're all basically just mini rockets. So that's one of the fun um, sort of give and takes of Torg. Is that the upside, wow, what damage. On the downside, uh, they tend to have lower mag sizes and their bullets go a little bit slower. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm a big Torg fan. This is a needle Hyperion chest. Ooh, it's a uh, corrosive sniper rifle. That's actually going to be awesome for uh, Zero, who is a, a very good sniper character. So corrosive uh, melts armor, essentially, and robots are made out of armor. So if you're going into a very robot-heavy sort of den, you're definitely going to want to bring a corrosive gun with you. Fire is great on flesh, electric is great on shields, corrosive is great on robots. But of course, you've got a Jacob sniper rifle, and you hit him in the face, it doesn't matter, because boom, critical hit. And they just go down in one shot like that stalker did. Oh, you see uh, Joe here has a Tidor rocket launcher, which, if he fires it, is going to be pretty awesome if we can find something to fire it at. Oh, gosh. Okay, stalkers are So, Tidor does a rocket launchers do a bunch of damage just because they're rocket launchers, and that's cool. But when they reload, you'll see you actually throw it like another rocket, a drunken rocket. So, you actually get another rocket for the price of one, basically, as you can see there. It's... Sometimes you want to hit because it just kind of flies in a crazy path, but when you do hit with a with a TDO reload, it is, it is just the most satisfying thing in the world, especially with a rocket launcher. And I believe the same rules for damage apply that they do for SMGs. The more rockets you leave in the clip, the more damage it does if the drunken rocket hits, but man, what a risk you're taking. Um, it's really good for, for close quarters or, or indoor combat, but you don't have to feel stressed to, to hit somebody with it. It's okay. <laughs> um, let's see if we can get an execute on this dude. Oh, very close. Oh, yeah, you found Pomone and Tumba. They are some of our fun little... Uh, Robert Anderson and Ruben Cabrera made these guys just for fun. And if you can't spot the reference, then you need to be older. Um, okay, uh, Pomone dropped some Iridium there. Iridium is a new... You can barely see it over his corpse. Iridium is a new... Uh, uh, oh, he dropped a legendary shield. How about that? That is the Transformer. More than your eye can see, so we could get past the legal team. That's why that's the, the flavor text there. Um, actually, I don't know what that one does. All of our legendary items in the game do something crazy, and I don't actually know exactly what this one does. You might want to play around with that, see what happens. Or not, if we're trying to hide the legendaries. I don't know what our deal is. You're the marketing guy, Adam. Um, so, yeah, anyway, Iridium is a new uh, currency in the game that basically allows you to buy uh, upgrades to your backpack size, upgrades to the amount of ammo you can carry for an individual weapon, or uh, or the bank size uh, back in Sanctuary, all that kind of stuff. It's uh, it's also used as currency to fight the raid boss Terramorphus. Uh, Radium is very neat, and as again, it sort of came from the opening of the vault in the first game. So these these stalkers, these slag stalkers, actually have the power of slag, and uh, they if you get slagged by enemies, it works the same way it does on them. You'll just take a lot more damage. So once you get slagged, you might not actually be in a lot of pain, but more pain is coming if you don't get behind something. But thankfully. Joe and Adam are badasses, and they don't actually need to worry about little things like cover, because they have legendary shields and all that kind of awesome stuff. So the Skags, in addition to having all those crazy new behaviors, they have new animations, they'll dodge, they'll run away, they'll retreat. Wow, you're just getting everything in this. You, you guys are having the luckiest run ever. Iridium everywhere and legendary shields. And look at all those explosions. Oh, this game is good. Oh, there's Toomba. Yes, that's Pomone's best friend, and who is... Um, there's a challenge in the game for, I think, killing both of them within, like, 30 seconds of one another. And as you can see uh, on the bottom left-hand corner of Adam's screen, uh, there are a bunch of challenges that they're completing just by being badasses, and those are, those are our badass challenges. And when you complete those, you get badass rank, and badass rank allows you to buy upgrades for your character. Uh, actually, not for your character, for your profile. It's universal to all your characters. You can get things like... Actually, do you want to show that off, Adam, maybe? Yeah, so he's going to go to his badass uh, menu, and right now he's got three badass tokens to spend. So he can upgrade his um, maximum health, gun damage, any of that stuff. So he got 1% more gun damage and 1% shield recharge and let's say 1% fire rate. So now all of his characters on this profile, every single new character he creates will have those buffs forever. Uh, and you can turn them off if you want to, if you want to have the pure experience, but uh, that's, that's basically for the, uh, the hardcore gamer, the, the, the end game player who really wants to buff up all their characters. You can, those are absolutely infinite. You can actually hypothetically get to, you know, infinity. 
Well done, Anthony, you're a writer. You really phrased that well. Thanks. So now we're heading into the uh, the holding cells, looking for Bloodwing. And you can see all of our neat Hyperion art. They're a much more metallic, shiny presence than are, you're probably used to seeing on Pandora. You're used to seeing a lot of rustic, very, you know, kit bash kind of stuff. Hyperion is trying to bring civilization to the frontier, which actually means just murdering everybody who disagrees with them, but putting up really shiny buildings so they hope nobody notices. Uh, yeah, Marcus still runs the ammo machines. Zed still runs the health machines. All your favorite characters are back from Borderlands 1. Or the ones that survived, anyway. Commandant Steel doesn't show up or anything. Um, you can notice also they have a, an optional objective right now to collect slag stamp samples. Uh, Patricia Tannis, who you may remember from the first game, uh, Joe just collected one of the slag samples. Basically, as you go through the map, you can complete optional objectives and get more money. And there are a lot of different uh, quests in the game that have optional objectives, and there's something that's completely new to Borderlands. So this is the uh, the accelerometer thingy area. Presumably, Hyperion did some pretty nasty tests with that thing, but it broke thankfully, because the, the uh, stalker sort of broke in here and took it over. Every sort of area in Borderlands 2 tells a little tiny story with, a, with a, the level design. So you can see here that, yeah, this thing used to be functional, but there's this big hole in the wall, and there are all these stalkers here, so they must have broken in somehow. And rather than go in and clear them out, Hyperion just has figured, eh, you know what, we didn't need it that bad anyway, and just kind of left. So, oh, you can totally see that Joe's um, uh, electric uh, singularity grenade is just doing work against the stalkers, because they, they are mainly shield-based creatures. They don't have a great deal of health. They have more shields. Than anything and the ability to bring in a bunch of because it, it's it's the cool thing about the grenades and borderlands is that they combine the cool different things about them so it's not just a singularity grenade it's not just a shock grenade it is both so he throws that grenade it pulls in everybody and then they all get shocked and die and you can see here the hyperion moon base on adam's screen is uh moonshotting in uh loaders because they thought it was just more spectacular and cool to have uh robots come down like meteors from the sky than just having them come in on trucks or something the Hyperion Moonbase is sort of there as an omnipresent reminder that Jack is in control of Pandora and you aren't until you can take him down. Yeah, speed loaders blow up real good if you hit them in their crit spots, but you got to make sure you're far away from them because even if you, you kill them off when they're close to you, you'll still take that damage. Oh, you found a loot loader. Those are kind of rare. Uh, basically, there's just a little walking loot uh, chest that if you kill them, you can go and sort of open them up and get their fruits, as it were. I'm saying as it were a lot, like I'm a British person. Um... Nice Jacob sniper rifle, nice bandit machine gun. Joe is handling the stalkers quite nicely with his doll, and the uh, the turret's also doing a lot of work. What's great about uh, about the different character classes is that they all have different ways they can deal with the very crazy ass creatures of Pandora. So uh, Joe can throw out his turret as Axton, and they'll just auto track stalkers. They don't care if the stalkers are invisible; they'll just track them. Uh, whereas Zero can go into a deception mode, and then all of a sudden, all the invisible enemies are suddenly visible. Uh, Maya can phase lock invisible enemies, and Salvador can just go into gunzerking mode and just spray the entire world with bullets and hope he hits something. Um, oh, a badass stalker. Badasses, you may remember from, from the first game, are basically like mini-bosses. They have way more health, and they do way more damage. So when you see one, you have to really focus on teamwork. Oh, wow, I didn't even realize you... Okay, yeah, grenades in this game are freaking awesome. Adam just threw a homing uh, fire spraying grenade. It didn't just go on the floor and spray fire everywhere. It actually homed in on the badass stalker and then made sure to burn him after it landed. I'm really pumped about that. Oh god, a super badass loader. I forgot about this part. Um, yeah, be careful. We're probably going to see something about the second wind mechanic or reviving here because super badasses are scary as hell. If you run into two of them, it's just a bad day for everybody. Um, I mean, you guys are doing good. Yeah, you got the turret out. The fire grenade's coming in. He's slagged. That's great. You're hitting all the crit spots. Just look at all the things that are happening. This game has a lot of things. Oh, he went down, but he's going to die, and you're going to get back up because you're badass. Or Joe's going to help you up because he's a good friend. Wow, Best friends forever now. Yes. <laughs> Teamwork. Yes. This game, uh, you can play with your friends. You can play with up to three other friends. We have four-player co-op, and it is... Technically speaking, it is off the Chizo for Rizzo when you play this game in co-op because all the different character classes have skills that interplay with one another very well. Um... If zero, or if, if uh, the soldier was uh, in the, um, or Sonic Bando was in the healing tree, he could have invested in a bubble shield, and he and Zero could have gotten inside and, and sort of been protected against projectiles for a little while. But instead, they're specced for incredible damage right now. So they took down that super badass in eff effectively no time at all. And that's one of the real joys of playing this game co-op, is seeing the different ways that your skills can interplay with one another. And uh, there's another slag sample. And you can see a badass shock skag sleeping in the, in the, in the, Jail cells over there. A neat Hyperion chest. Ooh, a green rocket launcher. 
If you remember rocket launchers from the first game, uh, they were pretty good. They they were not the most powerful thing in the world, though. Uh, in this game, they totally are. You can wreck with a rocket launcher, and it's balanced by making the rocket launcher ammo super expensive, but there is really nothing quite like dual wielding rocket launchers as Salvador and just going to town on a boss and just obliterating them. They do incredible amounts of damage, but their ammo is, you basically have to buy their ammo. It's very rarely found in the world, but you, 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 can, you can basically go broke buying rocket ammo, but oh boy, is it worth it once you see the damage you can do. All right, so it looks like Bloodwing might be in this cell. I'm pretending like I don't know. I totally do know. Um, oh no, she's not in the cell. What happened, Bloodwing? Oh, but there's fe feathers. Maybe this will be a sign as to where she's gone. Oh, I moved her a few hours ago. See him project here. Somewhere a little more dramatic. Bloodwing ain't there? Damn it! Jack's playing games with us. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm seeing some commotion in the observation. So Jack's moved Bloodwing. And all you gotta do is go find her. This is gonna be super duper easy. But no it isn't. Because Jack is a bad person and he just unleashed all the badass skags on you uh, who have different elemental attacks and all that stuff. Oh wait, uh, don't kill this badass thing. Yeah, I think he's gonna give the, the, the pup skag his uh, elemental attack. Oh yeah, okay, see all those skags next to the corrosive one? Now they're corrosive. Any elemental skag in the game can do that and it is the scariest thing in the world. So me telling them not to kill the, the skag was a really good idea from a like showing you cool stuff, but it was actually horrible from a gameplay scenario because now they're gonna die. <laughs> Oh, God. Okay, nicely done. You saw Joe get his second win there like a boss because we still have that mechanic from the first game. If you go down, you can kill somebody and get back up, and it is maybe my favorite mechanic in the history of the universe because I tend to play like a maniac, and I just jump into combat and go down, and then I use the second win to get out of it. Um, Ax uh, Axon actually has a lot of skills that are about doing more damage in downstate, so if you want to play in that crazy way as him, you totally can. And it is fun. More slag samples for Miss Tannis. Or Dr. Tannis, I guess. You probably say she has a doctorate. And, uh... It's a chest as well. We're getting some good stuff here. Doll SMG. Like uh, all other doll weapons, it, it bursts fires when you go into iron sights and does pretty, pretty damn good damage with good reliability. One little stalker is just a little... Ah, oh, these stalkers, man. They're a great strategic sort of thing to fight. And when you, But when you can't get a beat on them, you feel like all those guys in Predator when they're just shooting at the jungle and just going... Arr! And they hit them once, and you're like, oh, okay, well, at least I did something. It feels like that. If you've ever wanted to be Arnold Schwarzenegger during the first two acts of Predator, this is the game for you. Wow, those rockets really do a lot of damage. I didn't realize just how much they did. I never actually put rockets on my turret before. I played this game like nine times, and I, there's still a bunch of different builds I haven't played. I say like nine times, actually nine times. But you're seeing these Cyclone Stalkers now, so we have a bunch of different enemies, but even within those enemies, we have different subtypes. So the uh, Cyclone Stalkers actually prefer to... So you see Slag Stalkers there. Uh, we also have Cyclone stalker, Stalkers that prefer to go into close quarters combat. They'll sort of turn their tails around and try to whip you, or they'll toss bones at you. And uh, each of the different enemy types has a different sort of behavior with other enemies. So stalkers are actually fiercely territorial, so they'll attack each other. They don't even care if they're other stalkers, whereas bully mongs are all friends. Um, so you can see that Cyclone is trying to take cover because he's more of a melee guy, and he doesn't want to let Adam pop him because Adam is Adam waits for no man. Adam does not suffer Cyclone stalkers kindly. Handsome Jack once again chiming in. Handsome Jack... Uh, Took over Pandora after the vault opened. Took credit for opening the vault. Outlawed all vault hunters. Uh, basically just wants you dead as hell. And your objective in the in the whole game is just to find him with the help of the original four vault hunters and take him out. And sort of bring, not peace back to Pandora, but freedom. Because there will really never be peace on Pandora because these kinds of things exist. Like barf skags and horrible rack and stuff like that. But, you know, something that's at least not fascist horror. Which is sort of what Handsome Jack represents. Albeit charmingly fascist horror, it's still not good. Kill skills, you can see uh, we, we actually, uh, this is a small thing, but I think it's actually really cool. In the first game, you didn't have uh, visual feedback on screen when one of your kill skills was active. When uh, Adam kills somebody, you'll see under his XP bar, you'll see icons representing um, the fact that he has killed somebody and that a particular kill skill is active when that goes away. Or maybe, that, were they not kill skills? They're skills on something else? I don't know. Or no, it was because oh, Axton got the kill, not zero. 
There you go. See, right next to it, it says Contemptible Survivor. He has two kill skills active, and when those go away, you know the kill skills are no longer active. Which is a nice little bit of helpfulness um, that is new to Borderlands. Oh god, I'll, I didn't even talk about the minimap. Look, there's a minimap! Holy crap! You can see where enemies are, and uh, you can see what the map is, and all that kind of neat stuff. The menus you saw earlier on are all 3D, and they're made nicer for split-screen play, which we have. Uh, you can play couch co-op, as we call it, uh, or you can basically just play with somebody on your couch, and you can also um, take those co-op games online, those split-screen games online, and play with uh, other people. It's very cool. Badass Croesus Gag once again, buffing up his buddies. Very bad news, but critical shots from a sniper rifle are not to be messed with, and look at all that money! Oh yeah, there's auto pickup for all money and ammo in the game, and, and money, ammo, and health in the game now. You don't have to look down every two seconds and hit the uh, X key to pick something up. It just sort of slurks into you, which is my favorite thing in the world. <laughs> so satisfying to just run over money and have it go right into you. Um, oh, class mod. It uh, wasn't for your particular class. It was for Joe's, but you didn't give it to him because you're a bad friend. Um, class mods increase certain skills. They um, also basically just improve certain aspects of your... Oh yeah, trading! Good idea! Let's show off trading. You don't have to actually just drop something on the ground now and hope that somebody doesn't steal it without giving you what they wanted. You can actually go up to another person and trade them particular pieces of loot. Uh, he is trading Joe a class mod that will improve several skills and probably certain abilities. Uh, yeah, the Battlefront skill and improves all of the team's recharge uh, delay and uh, recharge rate in exchange for a pretty badass grenade. So that's a brand new feature and is very, very cool, as are most of the new features. So class mods are one of the most exciting things about the game, really, because you can spec your entire character around a class mod you find and play the game in a completely different way than you did before. Um, this new class mod is markedly different from the one Joe had previously, and it will maybe influence the way he, he plays now. Oh, we also have relic. Oh, yeah, in the inspect mode. Um, as you can see, Joe is currently looking at any item. You can basically do this with any item in the game. You can sort of do a you click the right stick and then just check it out. Check out the pretty art that our, our dudes made. If you could check out a, a gun... Like uh, maybe that uh, that sh that bandit shotgun or yeah no that's good too the sniper rifle you can just sort of look lovingly on the loot you found it's very the feature actually came pretty late in development but is was just too awesome not to do really um, yeah there's that shotgun it's made by bandits which means it has a really high magazine um, and it has shark teeth painted on the end of it because bandits are awesome um, in a purely narrative sense don't like start robbing people because I said that. Um, oh yeah, you found the receptionist. That was just something our creative director, Paul Helquist, made when he found a bunch of dialogue I had recorded and I didn't tell him where to put it. So he's like, okay, I'll just make a little uh, robot receptionist that says your stupid dialogue forever. And I was like, yay. So yeah, that was... Uh, what we're ready to show for the uh, Wildlife Exploitation Preserve. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you enjoy playing the full thing when it comes out on September 18th in the U.S. and September 21st internationally on Xbox, 360, PS3, and PC.